What's up everybody? Today's video, we're gonna be recharging the AC system on the Viper. Uh, it's a little bit low. I have never checked it since I bought it. It was working, but it seems like it's a little bit low with the heat that we've been facing lately. It just can't seem to keep up. So I have the gauges behind me. I have some Freon refrigerants. There are 134A. So it should be fairly straightforward. And uh, let me flip this around. I'll show you what we gotta do, what we have, and let's get it done. All right, so here we go with the car. I haven't done anything yet because I'm gonna kind of show you guys how we do this. So we have the gauges and most people you'll see hook the, the gauge set to like the middle of the hood, but obviously this is a clamshell hood. So uh, I'm gonna use this. This seems to be pretty good. And since the ports are right there, it's a uh, perfect length. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that these valves are closed, both the high and the low. And we also have to get that stuff ready. So we have the cans of R134A, uh, and it also says the weight of it. If you were gonna be filling a completely empty system, you would wanna check somewhere under the hood, because there's gonna be a sticker. In this case, it's over here, and it tells you exactly how much refrigerant you need and also what type. So you wanna make sure you have the same type that the vehicle calls for. So R134A, as you can see, and it also tells you how much. So this is 1.81 pounds. So you'll have to do a conversion on that because the cans don't typically come in pounds or I guess kilograms, kg. Uh, they come in ounces and grams. So you have to do the conversion again with this system being um, still, you know, it still has enough refrigerant in it that the compressor comes on. It's just not very cold inside. So we're just gonna be adding a bit more and this will get it done. So what we'll do first off is we'll get our yellow hard line connected. So that's gonna go here. So the yellow line's gonna go there and connect to the can. We also have this little doohickey here, which if you look inside, it's got that little pin in it and it goes down and presses and opens up the can. So it's the little kind of check valve in there. And that little pin is gonna release that when you turn this down. So this will connect to that side of the yellow hose. The other side of this yellow hose will connect to the center. The blue hose being the low pressure, pretty straightforward, it's gonna connect to where this blue cap is. Your cap might not be blue, but you really can't mix these up because these things are so, uh, they're different size. Like this one, the high pressure is a large size and the low pressure is a smaller size. Same thing here. So on the red one, you can see the diameter of this is much bigger than here. So if you get them side by side, if I can, if I can do this with one hand, you will see that they're completely different sizes, so you really can't mix it up. See, two different sizes. So the smaller one's gonna go there on a low pressure, larger one's gonna go here. Um, you also wanna make sure that these are closed. So see how this is open? You're gonna turn it the opposite way of whatever yours says. So in my case, Clockwise is open, counterclockwise is closed. Same thing over here. Clockwise is open, counterclockwise is closed. So those are fully uh, counterclockwise. And you're gonna remove your cap. You might hear a small hiss. You shouldn't hear a small hiss, but you might. And there's just these shredder valves, kind of like a bicycle tire or a car tire uh, valve stem in there. And that's what this is gonna connect to. So there is some seals, this will connect. So let me set the camera down, we'll connect these, and then we'll start getting this thing uh, going and charged. Next up, we'll connect our yellow line to the center port on the gauges and the other end to our can. So now that we have all of our lines hooked up, we've got the low connected, we've got the high connected, both of our uh, valves are closed up here. We are gonna go down here and we're gonna open the low side. So we're gonna turn this all the way clockwise. And then we are gonna come over here and we are gonna open our high side. So with both high and low connected with the valves open down there, like I was mentioning, you can see we still have a charge in the system. It just is t a tiny bit low for whatever reason. How long it's been low for, I don't know about the car use, but like I said, it can't keep up in the heat. So we are going to add 
some. And what we have to do is now that we have this on here, we'll connect it to the can, puncture the can by turning this in. And then we can start the car. We're gonna open up the low. We're not gonna touch the high. The high is only for evacuating the system, so you won't have to touch this, open this one. But we're gonna connect the can, turn the can upside down with the car running, open this, and let the contents of that can get sucked into the system through here. So we've got the can connected and you do wanna make sure it's upside down so that it can draw from the can. Coming up to here, again, both gauges are closed. We're gonna go ahead and start the car and turn on the AC controls to full. And the Viper is a little bit weird, so I don't wanna get into that in this video, but if you happen to be doing a Viper, the AC controls are kind of weird. So there's only really this one AC function. It's just this little frost mark, all the way cold, fan all the way on. So we'll start it. Make sure it's in neutral. We got the AC on. Parking brake set. Now we can go. And open that valve. if we start feeling AC pretty soon. It's already cold, you guys. Already got some AC coming in, which is nice, because it was bad for her. Oh yeah, she's working. Like I said, it wasn't that down, but... Just a tiny bit down. So we'll let this run until this can gets light and empty, and I'll show you a pressure chart that we're gonna reference to make sure that we're within spec. So with this can empty, and hopefully you guys can hear me over the buzzing of that fan, you can see that our PSI is, I want to say about 30, these are increments of 2, anyways we're below 40, but for the ambient temp, based on that chart that I showed you guys, you want to make sure you're between 40 and 50 or so. So we definitely want to bump it up, probably around 45 is where we're going to keep it, between 40 and 45, so we're going to add a little bit more. We're gonna add that extra can, probably not the whole can, but just a little bit more to get us within this range, operating range, and then we should be good. All right, so here we are. We're sitting, hopefully you can hear me, we're sitting right at about 45 PSI at idle. We put in two cans, so um, not full capacity, but there was still a charge in there, but just not enough. So now we're sitting where we should be for the ambient tents. It's about give and take of about 80 degrees it's probably even hotter here in the garage with this thing running but we're right about where we should be between 40 and 50 psi on the low side and we're good on that side also so anyways we can shut this down so what we're going to do is have both valves closed um, we also want to open fully open this kill this bug before he runs into my car i think he might have made it we're going to open this all the way so that this seals. So you're taking the plunger out of the can. Flap that, this is closed. And we can go ahead and turn the car off now. So to finish this up, we're gonna close these valves. So we're gonna close our high by turning it all the way counterclockwise. Same with the low. And I probably can't do this with one hand, but we're gonna remove our quick releases and put our caps back on and we're done. All right, and that is it guys. The AC system is now recharged. It's pretty simple. Um, there's really not too much to it. I wish I had one of those temperature gauges so I could like aim it at the vent and prove to you guys that it's cold, but trust me, 
It's super hot out right now and it feels cool enough for a Viper. The Viper's notorious for not having that good of AC, at least on these Gen 2 versions, but it does work well enough, as good as I think it's gonna get. We're back in business. So anyways, you guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Check out all the other videos. We got a lot on the Viper and a lot on this thing, this bruised banana. We're about to do the brakes on it also, so you'll see that video in another day or two. But anyways, you guys, thanks again. See you on the next video. Take care.